Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Seven Draws to Six, and I am the DM for Seventh Roll. And this is the second time I'm doing something like this. Uh, some of you might have seen my homebrew Tale uh, video, which uh, was a ancestry race, whatever you want to call it, that I did a little while ago. And I figured, you know, maybe I'd continue the series, see if there's a little bit more um, of an audience for this kind of stuff. So I figured let's make another video. The first one was kind of a trial run. Let's, however, make this one a little bit more of a serious video. Let's talk about a little bit more of a fun subject. Let's talk about a homebrew class of mine. Um, so a little bit of a, a little bit of a background. Uh, this is a class that I've been working on for at least a year, probably even two. Uh, like in the first version was a horrible mess. Um, but then I started kind of looking at, you know, other designs, uh, some more D&D contents came out. And I made a couple of changes to this uh, class. And in my opinion, it's already pretty decent. It could still use some tweaking. But it's been a while since I spent some time with it. And I figured, you know what, if I'm going to do this homebrew series, then I might as well um, adapt this one a little bit and have some fun with that. So, this is the Elemental Master. Um, now, first things first, uh, why call it an Elemental Master? What's the background? So, this is a class that uh, a lot of you are probably going to immediately see, like, the kind of Avatar influences in the uh, Avatar The Last Airbender influences. Pretty much, this class is meant to be a class that can control the four elements, fire, water, air, Earth. Uh, small disclaimer, uh, throughout these videos, you're probably going to see me type wind instead of air. Don't kill me. I will at some point fix that. Um, but at this point, that's not a thing yet. So let's start with that. Um, this is meant to be a class that can control all four of the elements, but kind of like Ong in The Last Airbender. Technically, he starts out being able to control all four of the elements, but he just doesn't know the stances, doesn't really know how to utilize them fully, right? Because he does still have the wisdom from his previous lives. So that's kind of the thing that's going to happen here. You start having kind of full control over one element, and then over time you start getting the other ones once you level up and at the end you can control all four of the basic elements so this class does take elements from the last airbender took some elements from grandia from the grandia series uh takes some um, elements from D, D lore itself uh you'll mostly notice that once we get to the abilities uh so you know it is definitely playable within uh, a D, &D campaign uh any of the basic settings but you know and this is just something I really wanted to make, so I figured, hey, let's go with it. So, one thing that I should probably also mention, uh, why is this called an Elemental Master and not an Elemental List? Uh, first of all, I didn't want to call it an Elemental List. And second of all, I've always felt like an Elemental List is not really... Is, every, like, I'm not going to say every single one, but like the, the Elemental Lists that I've seen usually tend to be like, okay, you can control elements, but you focus on one. And that's usually your subclass, right? You're a fire elementalist, or you're a thunder elementalist, or you're a lightning elementalist. I wanted a class that kind of could do everything at some point, but you had the choices along the way of how you wanted to grow into it. Why don't I call this an avatar class? Because it's not the bloody avatar. Like, I don't want to call this an avatar. Just, okay, personal preference, okay. Anyway, so that's kind of the, um, what we're going for. We're going for a class that can control the four basic elements and use them in some different ways. So, little points of order. Uh, this version that we're going to make in this video, because this is going to be a couple, a couple of videos long. This is not going to be one video or it's going to be three hours and I've already been talking for five minutes. So the classes themselves, uh, the version that we're going to be finished with at this point is going to have a link in the description below. However, I'm also probably going to try to record all of the videos today. Um, I'm just going to upload them in different 
moments so you can kind of see the evolution. The thing is, uh, I am going to put the current vinyl ver final version link online as well and in the description as well so you can kind of have a look of what we're growing towards and you guys can have a look and maybe test it out if you want to. So there's that. All right, let's go. So, Elemental Master. I'm not going to go through the fluff. It's pretty much just like, you know, the normal fluff. This is something that I wrote in like two minutes. Uh, didn't really put any thought into it. Um, you know, I'll probably like, if we ever get to version one, speaking of which, I should probably change this to version 0.5.1 because we're going to be doing not really an overhaul, but like a decent update. Um, so... You know, if at some point we get to version one, uh, I might actually, you know, finish this and make it a decent uh, introduction. I think it's okay, but, you know, it's probably improved. Connection to the different planes, you know, elemental masters tend to travel a lot, uh, learn a lot about the elemental planes, stuff like that. Creating an elemental master, backstory wise, uh, how did you get your powers? Did you grow up next to a portal to one of the elemental planes? Did another. Uh, elemental master show you how to do this kind of in druidic fashion maybe you learn some ancient magic you know pretty much the important thing is how how did you get interested in the four elements and why did you choose your specific element to start with or elements to start with and pretty much you know why is it that you are interested in all of this that's the big thing Quick builds. Um, you're going to notice that the Elemental Master is a Wisdom ca uh, caster, quote-unquote. It's not really a caster, uh, but a Wisdom character. Um, so pretty much you uh, pick Wisdom as your highest ability score, and then Strength or Constitution, depending on if you want to go on Damage or Health. Um, another possibility is technically Dex. If you want to go with a Dex build. So honestly, Dex might even be better than Strength. Should probably change this to Dex actually. Now that I think about it, Dexterity or Constitution. Because why would you ever pick Strength over Dex? And then finally, choose the Outlander background because you usually don't learn this in a city. You know, um, in that regard, it has like a little bit of a Druidic tendency. Then let's get to the fun part: class features. So, um. As an elemental master, you gain the following features. Hit points, I went with a D8. Why did I go with a D8? I don't feel like the elemental master, and you'll notice that, I don't feel like the elemental master is martial enough, quote unquote, to be on the same level as ranger, fighter, and paladin. So my immediate reaction was like, it's not a D10. However, it's not a full caster, and it's not like this... You know, the like, quote unquote, the cliche sorcerer and wizard where they don't really focus on their physical abilities, but they focus on their mental abilities. That's not really what this is either, right? In that regard, this, this class does have some influences. I think most of the influences from Monk. So I do feel like they're a little bit more sturdy than like a wizard and a sorcerer base, which is why I ended up saying, you know, a D8 makes sense. So, you know, you get a hit die, you get a D8 hit die. You get 8 plus con at level 1, 1d8 one plus 5, uh, or 5 plus con at uh, every level of Elemental Master after your first level. Easy enough, right? Standards. Proficiencies. Uh, armor, light armor, medium armor, and shields. Um, and then weapons, simple melee weapons. Uh, I'm actually going to change that. I don't know if originally there was like this thought of like every elemental master has to be a ranged character, uh, a melee character, because range doesn't make sense on these guys. You'll notice that in a second once we get to the first feature. But it's like, eh, if you want to be able to, you know, shoot people with a bow, it's fine. So I'm just going to change this to simple weapons. And then uh, one tool of your choice. Um... Again, this is kind of the monk influences where I felt like usually these people, you know, they have interest in the elements, so they probably do something with them for their profession. So it makes sense for them to have like a tool, like something like smith's tools, even if they are an earth uh, elemental master, like, you know, they've learned how to shape earth, maybe even go into metal at some point, you know, stuff like that. That's an example. Um, the one thing I'm not... 100% sure on is like the armor. I do at least want to go with this, like light, light medium shields. The reason that I'm not sure, and I'm going to be honest in that, is 
I, I don't like this. I don't like this on Ranger. I don't like this on Matt Mercer's Blood Hunter. I just don't like light and medium. Mostly because it's this element of like, if you go medium armor, you still need to invest in decks to make it work. Like if you have eight decks with medium armor, you are you still suck at it. You, you still have sucky AC. And that's not even adding like the fact that deck saves are the most made save in the game. I'm not a fan of this, but you know, if I follow the other classes and kind of follow along with like Cleric and Druid, where I compare this to, of course not Monk, because Monk has abilities to gain AC, you know, in a different way, which this class doesn't. It makes sense to just copy over light, medium, and shields. But I this is just one in DD that I'm personally not a fan of. So but you know, we're playing D D, so we're just gonna go with this. Anyway, um, and then saving throws, wisdom and intelligence. I'm actually going to change this. Um, originally, my idea was wisdom because it's a wisdom class, like, you know, end of discussion. I'm going to change intelligence. The reason for this being originally my idea was that someone could become a, a, could become a elemental master through learning it, through learning about the elements. So I do think intelligence makes sense. The problem that I kind of run into is that I personally feel like this eliminates the kind of physical part that the Elemental Master, in my personal opinion, still kind of requires. There is a physical element to them, which you can kind of see just off of the fact that they have these armors. So for me, I feel like I need one physical saving throw and one mental saving throw. The mental one has been taken by Wisdom. And for people who don't know this, uh, if you take your saving throws, the standard is to pick one to be Dex, Wiz, or Con, and then one to be Strength, Intelligence, or Charisma. For those of you who don't know where that comes from, back in 3.5, I don't know if they had this in 4, and Pathfinder, um, you actually only had three saves. You had Fortitude saves, you had willpower saves and you had reflex saves which happened to be constitution saving throws wisdom saving throws and dexterity saving throws so that's where that come from those were like the three main saves the ones you would make the most and then you had like the other three which you never made in previous games but they added those because it made it a easier and b you know allowed them to get more different saves on and stuff i guess um, but because I kind of want to highlight the physical part as well, I'm actually going to change this to strength, which, and I will admit, I'm probably not going to get here uh, during this video, uh, but this is also going to change my level 14. Level 14 is pretty much you get proficiency in all other saving throws. It's just worded in a way where you're kind of fucked if you multi-class. Um... But I just like this wording a little more. I might change it to like you just get proficiency in everything. Uh, I probably will, but I kind of wanted the. There's like a little bit of a flair element to it. So pretty much giving you proficiency in strength is going to become proficiency in constitution saving throws. And this is going to become intelligence saving. I'll change the text probably in between videos at some point. Uh, but that, otherwise I'm going to forget that. Um. Anyway, let's get back to the topic. So... Skills, acrobatics, athletics, arcana, history, insight, medicine, nature, perception, persuasion, religion, and stealth. I'm not going to waste too much time on that. This is honestly just what I felt was, was good for this class. Um, equipment, same thing, honestly. Like leather or scale mail, because, you know, you get light armor and medium armor. Explorer's pack or scholar's pack just made sense. Simple melee weapon or shield, and then a simple melee weapon and a dagger. Eh. Pick what you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, no martial weapons because you don't have proficiency in martial weapons. I think this makes sense. Honestly, this is again something that I was like, this feels good. Let's go with it. You know? If there's just people who have opinions on this, go for it. Then we get to the bread and butter of this class. So this is probably going to take a little bit. Um, and I don't know if I have worded it perfectly yet. Um, but first feature, elemental control. It's an elemental master, you have basic control of the elements, right? So you are able to cast the elemental blast cantrip. Actually, one thing that I'm thinking about right now um, is to maybe do this. 
Yes. The elemental blast cantrip detailed at the end of the description, and you can choose a basic elemental affinity. Um, first of all, elemental blast is a cantrip, so you of course need a spell save DC, eight plus bonus, proficiency plus wisdom, and a spell attack modifier, proficiency bonus plus wisdom. Standard stuff. Now let's go to the back of the class description for a second. Uh, it should be here. Elemental blasts. So this is the cantrip. You get this at level one. Why? This is the bread and butter of the class. This is pretty much the thing that you're probably going to be doing most of the time. So what does Elemental Blast do? It has a casting time of an action, range of 90 feet, uh, somatic components, and duration instantaneous. It's just a blast. It's kind of based on uh, Eldritch Blast in that way. Blast of energy comes forth from your hand. The type of the blast can be chosen by the caster. So that's the fun part. Pretty much this is the ultimate way to get past resistances. If a creature has resistance to fire damage, you let it deal cold damage. If it has resistance to bludgeoning damage, you make it pier deal piercing damage. This is a, you know, that's pretty much the point of this cantrip. You know, just base, apart from being a very big thing. So on a hit, the target suffers 1d8 damage. The type of the damage is dependent on the type of blasts, and there needs to be a point. Uh, so fire makes fire damage, water makes piercing damage, wind makes slashing, earth makes bludgeoning, smoke makes poison, ooze makes acid, ice makes cold. For the people who know a little bit about the background of D&D, you will know that this is pretty much the, um, the elemental, what's it called? This is pretty much based on the elemental planes, right? Uh, there are four basic elemental planes, the fire plane, the water plane, the earth plane, and the air plane. As I said, I type wind a lot. Um, and the air elemental plane. But then there's also, I think they're called the para elemental planes. I think the other ones are the quasi elemental planes. Don't quote me on this. There's four para elemental planes. And these are kind of the places where those, the first basic four planes kind of overlap with one another. And because of that, the elements fuse into one thing, right? So fire plus, uh, now fire and water can't merge because they're on opposite sides. Earth and wind can fuse because they're on opposite sides. So you have fire and wind, which makes smoke, right? You know, if you fuel the fire, then you get smoke. Uh, wind and water, you get ice because the water cools off. Ice. Water and earth, you give water to the earth, you get ooze. Um, which I treat as acid in my game. And then uh, I think I'm forgetting uh, earth and fire, which is magma. For those of you wondering why is magma not in the list, magma is treated as fire. You know, details. And the spell's damage increases by 1d8 when you reach 5th, so it becomes 2d8, 11th level, 3d8, 17th level, 4d8. Kind of very standard stuff based on, you know, other cantrips. Uh... I did say it was kind of based off of um, Eldritch Blasts. In this case, it's not, you don't get four beams. You get just one blast, which deals additional damage for reasons uh, that will become quite apparent. Once we go back to the features, so I'm going to go back to this. I just realized I made a grave mistake <laughs> by, for some weird reason, scrolling up in my where I type and not this. Uh, elemental control. So you get this. You get the elemental blast cantrip. But you also get to choose a basic elemental affinity. That's the name that I'm giving it. What does that mean? It means, as I said, you will feel more comfortable with one element than with certain others. Right? So you get to choose one of the four basic elements. Fire, water, earth, air. Again, wind. Sorry. Um... And you will get affinity with that, which means when you do something with that type of elements, your moves will become stronger. You will be stronger when you do stuff with that, but that doesn't mean that you don't have the others as kind of a backup, right? Example, let's say that you cast the, uh, so you choose the, uh, you, you, look, okay, I can talk, seriously. Choose one of the following basic elemental affinities. Let's say that you pick fire. When you deal fire damage using the elemental blast cantrip, you can deal additional fire damage equal to your wisdom modifier. So that's the point of these affinities at first. They improve 
your elemental blast cantrip when you deal specific types of damage. So, let's say that you deal fired, that you, you know, you throw out an elemental blast, you use it to deal fire damage, you will, and you've chosen fire elemental affinity, you will get your wisdom modifier and additional damage, so 1d8 plus 2, 3, whatever. Once that goes up to 2d8, that's still 2d8 plus your basic thing. That's why I decided to go with this um, one blast to deal the damage. Because there's also a couple of other ones. Uh, but you can still, you know, even if you've picked fire as your affinity, let's say that you're facing off against a creature that's fire resistant, you can still go, well, fuck that. I'm just going to throw a piercing elemental blast, which is technically water, but it's not going to be resisted. I don't get the additional bonus, but it's not resisted. So, you know. Um... So the second one, water, whenever you deal piercing damage uh, using the Elemental Blast Cantrip, select a creature within 10 feet of the target, it gains temporary hit points equal to your Wisdom modifier, but they only last for one minute or until depleted. Uh, you can't get temporary hit points from more than one source, so you can't like keep giving this, and because it only lasts one minute, you can't be like start of the day, cast Elemental Blast five times, buff your party with like four temporary hit points, and hey, let's go. It's not that broken unless you know you get to like later features um but that's kind of why that is why that's only one earth when you deal bludgeoning damage so when you throw a giant boulder uh you can select a creature within 10 feet of the target gains one ac kind of like a couple of pieces of the boulder kind of attached to the person as like additional defense uh air or wind uh when you deal slashing damage i'm actually gonna here already when you deal slashing damage uh, using the Elemental Blast cantrip, you can push the target back five feet in any direction of your choice. Very simple, kind of a little bit of a positioning tool. Um, and then you can select an additional basic Elemental Affinity at 5, 11, and 17. Just happen to be the levels where you, you know, get an increase in damage. I thought that was a cool little thing. Um, so you, at the end, once you're level 17, you have everything. You have all four of these. That's the way it works. That's why this is a thing. I just felt like that would be fun, but like at lower levels, you do have to choose what path you're going to get there. I kind of like that personally, um, you know. Finally, at level 11, you can also choose one of the combined elemental affinities. So I've already mentioned the para elemental planes, right? Um, magma, ooze, smoke, and ice. Um, you're going to be able to control one of those. Why is this at level 11? Two reasons. The features are a little bit more broken is one. And two, at level 11, you are guaranteed to have three basic elemental affinities, which means you are guaranteed to be able to combine two of them. Because what you're going to see here is if you want to pick ooze, you require the water and earth basic elemental affinities. The fun part is because this is at level 11, you can choose at level 11, you can first choose your basic elemental affinity, finish up whatever you need to get your combined elemental affinity, and then choose your combined elemental affinity. That's kind of the design behind that. Uh, then uh, ooze requires water and earth. When you deal acid damage using the Elemental Blast Cantrip, the target's next attack is made with disadvantage because you they have acid over them. Cold uh, requires the water and wind basic elemental affinities. When you deal cold damage using the Elemental Blast Cantrip, the target's movement speed is decreased by 10 feet for one minute. This can stack. Um, I'm going to change this one. The reason for that being that I've had some people, I've had someone who tested this class, and their reaction at a certain point in time was, I feel like cold is a little broken. Because there is the possibility, uh, especially if you have a way to apply it multiple times, to just make it so that certain creatures can't move anymore. At which point, melee characters become kind of useless. I'm not sure. Also, I just realized that I've written targets like this in plural instead of with an apostrophe. So I'm going to have to change that uh, target. Yeah, I have to change that. I have to add apostrophes to everything. Oh, God, that's not going to be fun. Um, so this kind of takes out 
melee fighters in combat, which I can imagine why that wouldn't be fun. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this to uh, is decreased by one uh, by 10 feet um, until the end of your next turn. But I'm, gil I'm, I'm still going to let it stack. If you're capable of like doing it three times and they lose 30 feet of movement speed, I want you to be able to like make them be stuck. Uh, hey guys, one small addendum that I wanted to make to this first video on the uh, the Elemental Master. Uh, I actually changed um, using the Elemental Master Cantor, the target movement speed is decreased by 10 feet until the start of your turn uh, instead of the end of your next turn. Reasons for that being, let's say that you like force your opponent to move in some way, somehow. Um, I don't want them to be forced to have like double decreases to their movement speed. So I kind of like this more personally uh, to have it until the start of your next turn. Just smaller than that I wanted to make. Uh, it should already be in the 0 0.5.1 version. So, all right, bye guys. Smoke requires fire and wind. Uh, when you deal poison damage using the elements of blast cantrip, the targets must the targets the targets what the fuck the target must make a Constitution saving throw on a failure. Uh, on a failure, for the next minute, the target takes 1d8 poison damage at the start of its turn. Target will make a constitution saving throw at the end of its turn to end the effect, but the effect does not stack. But, as you can see, there, uh, it, this one remains for a minute. So, smoke is a little bit more risky than fire, because fire just instantly deals the damage. But smoke has the option of continuously keeping on dealing the 1d8. That's the advantage. And then uh, magma requires fire and earth. When you deal fire damage using the elemental blast cantrips, all creatures within five feet of the original target, but excluding the original target, must make a deck save. All creatures that fail to take 1d8 fire damage, uh, but cannot be combined with the fire basic elemental affinity effect. I don't want you to be like dealing fire damage and then combining magma and fire. That's not what, it's either a magma blast or a fire blast. That's really uh, why that's there. Um, I'm thinking about changing this. I'm not sure. I'm thinking of making this take the damage the original target took. Uh, but you'll see why. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Because we're going to get to level 2. At which point you get bursting. You know, sorry. Elemental Way. Um, this is just personal preference. I'm going to be honest. Um, Elemental Way. As an element of the master, not only have you learned to control the elements, but the elements have, you can, have affected you in several ways. Uh, however, the element that fits one's character is different for each master. Choose one of the elemental ways to obtain. So either, uh, so pretty much each of these uh, gives you proficiency in a skill. But if you already have said proficiency, you get expertise in it. You double your proficiency bonus for those checks. Um, one thing that you will notice also is that every single one of these four for fire persuasion, for water uh, medicine, for earth athletics, and for wind acrobatics, all four of those are in this list. Acrobatics, athletics, medicine, and so you can definitely take them uh, beforehand and then get expertise in them at level one. Why is that in here? Because I love expertise, personally. <laughs> That's really the only reason. And this again has to turn to air. I'm not going to do that everywhere, but I'm just going to do it when it bothers me. And that's probably going to be every single time. Affinity points. So at level two, uh, you get more control over the elements. Harnessing their energy and storing it in your body to unleash when you please is represented by affinity points. Uh, one thing that you'll see in the table is how many affinity points you get. You get as many as your level. Easy enough. Now... Affinity points recharge on a short rest. A reaction that I have gotten is Monk has the exact same thing, but they're called key points. Why don't you call your ability key points? Personal preference. That's literally the reason. I have thought about it. I don't like it. I don't like calling them key points. I don't care how similar it is to Monk. I just prefer calling it affinity points. 
And originally, I think I still, in the multi-classing at the bottom, I think I still have the fact that you can use affinity points for monk abilities and key points for affinity for elemental master abilities. I'm actually going to cut that. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I don't. I just don't. I can't explain why. That's the worst part. I legitimately can't explain why I don't like it. I just don't. And yeah, that's why. Sorry. Anyway, uh, at this level, they gain two ability. You get two abilities alongside those uh, affinity points, which is first bursted blasts. Bursted blasts pretty much means you put a little bit of your soul into your blasts and boost it. You can only do that if you have the corresponding affinity, of course. Right. So, for example, let's say that you have a fire affinity or fire element, the basic uh, elemental affinity of fire. You can spend an affinity point to increase your fire damage of your elemental blast by 1d8. However, you can only spend a number of affinity points on one elemental blast equal to your elemental master level divided by four rounded down. I don't know if this is a good balancing thing, um, but I didn't want you to be able to at level seven just pump 78 points of damage into your blasts because that would be insane. And honestly, even divided by two, it felt like too much. Um, so at this point, I'm going with elemental master level divided by four rounded down. This might become rounded up. I'm thinking about that. Um, because I don't like the fact that it's like up until like level eight. Actually, I'm going to change it to rounded up. I like rounded up more. Um, which means at fifth level, you can put two points into it. I personally like that more. Um, it feels mathematically cleaner, which is maybe a very weird thing to say unless you know that I'm an engineer who spends his entire life doing math. So, you know, um, so yeah, this is going to be rounded up, uh, with a minimum of one. You can spend affinity points after rolling your attack, but before you know if the attack hits or misses, but before you know the result is attacking. So then fire for every affinity point spent you, uh, so pretty much every single time you cast an elemental blast, you pick whether or not you want to spend affinity points. If you do, you get additional stuff. Uh, if you cast a fire elemental blast, you can deal additional damage. Uh, water, you can give additional temporary hit points equal to your wisdom modifier for each point spent. Earth, an additional target, gets an additional point of AC. I didn't want this to be like an AC stacking where you all of a sudden got like 20 AC. Uh, or five, or you know, three AC off of one blast. I felt like an additional target gets plus one. Felt better. Wind or air, sorry, uh, pushes them back for five more. Target has disadvantage on one more attack made. Um, this one I might have to reword. I'm not sure. For each affinity point span, the target's movement speed is decreased by five additional feet. So you can actually just spend four points at some point and let them lose thirty feet of movements which i think is kind of cool but it's only one turn so you can kind of like stop people dead in their tracks which i do think is it's a little bit of a counter to melee builds but you know if they're already near you then you know. um then smoke for each additional affinity point spent the poison damage increases by 1d8 so that damage that keeps stacking over time increases and then magma for each affinity point spent the fire damage increases by a d8 the thing that I'm thinking about is changing uh, this to um, uh, all creatures within five feet of the make a deck safe. All creatures that fail take damage equal to the damage the original target took. But then this would become uh, the range of, or like the range of it becomes larger. I kind of like this more right now. Um, but I'm thinking about making it more of a range thing because I feel like at this point magma they have to be really clumped up to get value out of it. And I think it might be better to just make the base damage better and grow over time because they all take the same hits. But just make the range larger. Actually, now that I think about it, I like that more. So I'm going to change that. Um, so I'm actually going to change that. So I must make it all creatures that failed to take the same damage as the original target. Um, 
And I'm thinking how I'm gonna word this uh, for each affinity point spent. The range for each affinity point spent, the range of targets that have to make a dex against this damage increases by five feet. I like that more. To be fair, once you get this, you already deal 3d8, but then you can just like do it over more targets, and I kind of like that a little more. Personal preference, again. All right. Then, uh, quick protection. When you reach level 2, uh, this is the second one that you can spend affinity points on. When you reach level 2, you are able to use the elements to protect yourself. Pretty much as a bonus action, choose a fire, water, uh, air, or earth shield, and you get a corresponding bonus. So each of them has a basic effect that you can use no matter what affinities you picked up, right? Fire, whenever you, you know, use your bonus action, there's a little shield of fire that comes around you. Whenever someone hits you with a melee attack, they take 1d4 points of damage. Water, you can put this little shield around you. You uh, are able to add a d4 to any intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throw you make until the end of uh until the start of your next turn uh earth the same thing but for strength dex and con pretty much like for water it's this thought of like you're kind of closing your mind to everything that might affect it whereas for earth it's this thing of like i'm boosting my body and making sure that i have the tools to dodge everything and then air um pretty much you put this little shield around you and you become harder to hit so every single time anyone tries to hit you roll a d4 subtract that from their attack roll but each of them also has a boosted effect so whenever you uh have the shield up you can spend a key point when the effect triggers or a key point affinity point now i'm going to start calling them key points myself you can spend an affinity point on that ability to then get a boosted effect, but only if you have the elemental affinity from the elemental wave feature. The elemental wave feature, the elemental control feature. So I fucked that up. It's from the elemental control feature. Uh, so pretty much what happens here is, let's say that someone attacks you with a melee attack, you have your fire shield up, and you have fire affinity, then you can choose after the attack to spend an affinity point, and they now take damage equal to your uh, wisdom modifier. Um, at this point, this doesn't take up a reaction, because I'm expecting that you have to spend multiple affinity points to do it multiple times. So this is this is all like on like the shield itself, the base shield is on everything. This is on one attack. Um which technically it should be as a reaction. Uh also use the boosted effect of the feature. However, those only last for the one trigger. Eh. I have to think about how I'm going to type this. Um, feature uh, add specification. I'm going to do that in between videos. I'm going to think. So it's su supposed to only like work once per, like every affinity point you spend, it's only on one effect. Uh, at this point. Yeah. Actually, should it be? Yeah, it should be. Uh, otherwise, this might become too broken. Should it be? Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this right now. And just... Mm, not sure yet. I'm not sure. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it in the broken version right now. And I'm going to ask you guys' opinion on what you think about it. Um, so pretty much you can spend the point and then that permanently remains. And you have a bonus action dodge for a key point if you've picked wind, sort of like that. Actually, that's, actually I just thought about that. That's just a, this is like just a bonus action dodge with an additional d4. 
Oh no, you can spend one affinity. Oh no, it is the, the normal version. If you're forced to make one of the affected safety throws. Oh no. I just realized. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. I'm probably confusing people. Anyway, it's supposed to be for every attack or for every save, you have to spend an affinity. That's really the way. It doesn't use a reaction right now. Um, because I, I want to allow people to do it multiple times to spend their affinity. Level 3, you get a combat path, which is pretty much your subclass, uh, which are going to be uh, their own separate videos. 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, 19th, ability score improvements, you know, the normal things. 5th level is a uh, path feature. And then we get to level 6, but this video has been running for 40 minutes, so that is going to be for the next video. If you want to see that, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and then you will get an update when we get to version 0.5.2 when we get to that video. Again, the 0.5.x, whatever the last version is going to be for the series, will be in the description below as well. So you can have a look at the current version of the class in its entirety. With that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been 7 Draws 6. Until next time.